Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel all about hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. Today, we are finishing the 10-part series on getting started backpacking with three things you should do before, during, and after your first backpacking trip. All right, welcome back. If you have been following this series from the very beginning, you probably have a boatload of gear by now and you are finally ready to go on your first backpacking trip. Now for this final video, I wanted to keep things fairly simple and manageable. So I tried to come up with three things that I think would be good to do before, during, and after somebody's first backpacking trip or one of their early backpacking trips. These are things that I either did that helped me out quite a bit or that I wish I had done because I know they would have helped me out had I done them. The first thing I would recommend that people do before they go on their first backpacking trip is basically make sure that they are at a fitness level that they can handle their first trip. And by fitness level, I mean the fitness of your body to do backpacking. You might be in great shape because you run or because you lift weights or because you swim. That doesn't necessarily mean that your body is in shape for backpacking because it just uses different muscles in different ways than those other activities. And so you may be surprised to find out that there are some muscles that get pretty sore that you didn't even know you had. The nice thing about backpacking is that it is, in general, very scalable to your fitness level. And by that I mean you can go a short distance if you're not in very good backpacking shape, or you can go a long distance if you're in good backpacking shape, or anywhere in between. I know solid backpackers that are in their 70s, that weigh over 300 pounds. I also happen to know a 10-year-old girl that can hike circles around me because she is my daughter. However, that doesn't mean that it's safe to just throw a heavy backpack on and take off into the wild. You do want to do some test hikes to see how you're doing, to see how far you are comfortable with before you jump into that first backpacking trip. What I would recommend is just figure out the farthest that you have hiked lately and just try that distance again without a big heavy backpack on. Just go out there and do the walk. See how you feel the next day. If you're fine, you don't need any kind of recovery, then take a longer distance hike later on, see how you feel, and just keep building up until you reach the point where you go, okay, at this point, I start to become pretty uncomfortable, and the next day I'm not feeling so hot. That is probably where you want to aim in your training, because that right now is your maximum. When you try that same hike with the backpack on, it's going to feel very different. So you also want to start building up your pack weight. Maybe start off with just the soft stuff that doesn't weigh too much, like some clothes, a jacket, and maybe your sleeping bag or sleeping quilt. Get the backpack full, but not too heavy. See how you feel after that hike. And basically just keep ramping it up until you're at about the level that you think you could have a pretty good time going on a backpacking trip. If you are interested in outdoor mountain fitness, I would check out Chase Mountains. Chase is a great guy, and yes, that is his first name. And he has a channel dedicated to not just hiking, but how to hike, how to prepare your body for good hiking. He's got a lot of free material on his channel. He also has some paid programs you can involve yourself in. Chase didn't ask me to do this. I am not affiliated with him in any way other than just uh, knowing of him and having communicated a few times, but I'm not getting any kickbacks or anything else for this. I just think he's providing a really great service to the backpacking outdoor community, and I hope you will jump on his channel and check him out. Links to anything I talk about in this video, as always, are in the description below. All right, so once you have done a few test hikes and you've kind of established what the mileage and elevation is to your limit and you've built up your backpack, it is time to plan your trip. Now, I have a whole video, and in fact, it was a collaborative video with a couple buddies of mine on how we plan our backpacking trips, so I will just link to that in the description below. But basically, what you're going to look at is where you might want to go, check out the trail, make sure that the mileage and the elevation is about what you think you can handle. You're going to want to look at the weather predictions, and if you're close enough to your hike date, you can probably get a pretty accurate reading from any number of websites, but you also might want to look at the historical data for that time period and that place, because that might help you know what temperature extremes you're going to experience. You're also going to see if you're going to need a permit 
to backpack in this area. A lot of places that you can go for free and without any kind of permit still require one for overnights. I would say that when you pick where you're going, make sure that you are not going too far. You want a short overnight experience that isn't gonna be overly taxing, that's gonna leave you plenty of time in camp to make sure that you are able to deal with your gear and get through the things you need to get through. And you don't wanna be so far away from your car that if things go wrong, you can't bail. All right, so let's say that you are now aware of your fitness level, you know what you can do, you've found a trail that matches what you can do. If you haven't done it already, it's time to do a full-on gear test. Your first full gear test should be done at home or somewhere that you can easily recover if things don't go well. You're going to want to do things like set up your tent. If you can't mentally walk through an entire tent setup process, you probably don't know it well enough yet. And you don't want to get out there on the trail and suddenly there's a rainstorm or winds blowing and you've got stuff laying around everywhere and you're trying to set that tent up. It can be maddening. So make sure that you set that tent up and take it back down and set it back up and take it down enough times that you can mentally rehearse it in your mind, that you can see the steps before you even grab that tent. At that point, I'd say you're definitely ready. You're also going to want to try out your cook system. And by try out, I don't just mean make sure you can light it. I would go start to finish. Pull the cook system out. Use it. Actually make one of the meals that you're going to bring on trail and eat the meal. Put everything away. Clean everything up. And make sure that all the stuff you need to do that is going in your cook kit so that when you get to the trail and you are ready to eat, you aren't surprised. Part of your gear test is going to be packing your backpack, possibly for the very first time. I would also test out the sleep system. Make sure that you can blow up your pad, attach your quilt if that's what you have, understand how your sleeping bag works, blow that pillow up, and then spend the night in that system. Make sure you can actually get a good night's sleep because if you can't get a good night's sleep in your sleep system in your home, it's definitely not gonna work out for you when you're outside. The main principle in all of your pre-trip activities is that you are trying to limit the number of surprises that you may encounter on the trail. Surprises and shocks are not things that you necessarily want on your first backpacking trip. So to the degree that you can prepare for everything that you're gonna do in camp, somewhere safer, like in your home or in your backyard, to that degree, you will probably be able to relax and enjoy your first backpacking trip a lot more. All right, so once you have established a baseline with some test hikes, and you have planned where your first backpacking trip is going to be, and you have tested out all of your gear, packed your bag, and you are confident that you know how to use it, it's time to get hiking. So what three things do I recommend for your actual first backpacking trip? Number one is leave no trace. Leave no trace, or LNT, is a set of principles put together by people in the backcountry that help you limit your impact on where you're going. Listen, nobody is going out backpacking to see evidence that other people were there or to be disturbed by the people that are there. Practicing leave no trace principles are often pretty obvious, but a lot of people need to be told them anyway, and some of the principles aren't as obvious as you might have thought. The first of the leave no trace principles is to plan ahead. Once you learn all of the principles and you know where you're going, you need to plan ahead with the kind of gear that you might need in order to practice these principles. An obvious leave no trace principle is not to trash the trail or the campground where you are going, but in order to do that, you have to have somewhere to put your trash in order to get it out. Now, sometimes that trash is pretty nasty <laughs> and you don't want it touching your other gear. You don't want smells escaping. So you're going to want some kind of system for dealing with that trash. And if you don't have it on trail, you're not gonna find it on trail. Another principle is that as well as you can, you should travel and camp on durable surfaces. What that means is that when you are on trail, you stay on trail. You don't just blaze through the bushes and undergrowth because you think you see a cool spot. Trails are already scars on the ground of the backcountry, and we put up with them because we want people to be able to get out into the backcountry, and if everybody just goes their own way, the whole place is gonna get trashed. If you're cutting switchbacks, 
If you're blazing your own trails, you are ruining what the trail is there for. And the same kind of thing can be said of camping. Setting up a camp does not mean just walking into the bushes and knocking everything out of the way until you've got a nice surface and then setting your stuff up. If you are going somewhere where people typically backpack, you're going to find places where people typically camp. And those are actually the best places to use because they're already trampled, they're already flat, they're already compacted, there's already nothing growing there. Use those areas over and over again and that will minimize the number of places that have to get trashed in order for people to enjoy the backcountry. This is especially true with fires. Fires are very devastating to the ground that they are on, so if there is an established campfire ring, use it. And you also want to be careful of the in-between places. If you see a place that's been kind of trampled and trashed because someone stayed there, but it hasn't yet become a flat, lifeless, durable surface, don't re-camp there and make it worse. Find somewhere better, find somewhere that is already prepared for a camper and use it. Another principle is to respect the lives of those that are out there in the woods. Other people and wildlife. Don't go into the backcountry with your Bluetooth speaker jamming out onto tunes. Nobody wants to hear your music outside. The animals don't want to hear your music outside. When you go into the backcountry, you have left your home and you are entering the home of other creatures. And it is good to respect that and not disturb them too much. In fact, the less impact you make, the more you're probably going to enjoy it because you're going to see more of that wildlife than you would have if you just went crashing down the trail, talking loud, or blasting music. Now, one exception to that rule is if you are in bear country. A lot of hikers like to put a little bear bell on their backpack, or maybe occasionally just do a hand clap and, hey bear, hey bear, sing some songs to themselves, because you don't want to accidentally sneak up on a bear. If there is a bear ahead of you on the trail, you want that bear to know you're coming way before you know the bear is there. Sneaking up on and surprising wildlife is typically not a good idea. So if you are in a place in the backcountry where there are animals that are going to be dangerous to you, having a little bit of noise going on without being obnoxious so that they know you're coming, isn't a bad idea. All right, tip number two for your first backpacking trip is while you are on the trip, take notes about how things are going. Whether it's on a notebook or your phone, you just wanna kinda of keep a record of how things are going. How do my feet feel? Oh, you know what, at mile two, my feet started to get hot spots and I had to stop and take care of blisters. Note when you start to feel maybe really tired and you're starting to get kinda, huh, I don't wanna do this anymore. Were the clothes you were wearing suitable to the temperature? This is why I recommended a thermometer as one of the gadgets I like to bring with me when I'm hiking and backpacking. If I don't have an accurate record of the temperature, it doesn't really help to talk about how my clothes are performing. Maybe write down what you're hungry for. If you get out there and that hiker hunger starts to get at you and nothing you brought with you sounds very good, think about what does sound good. Man, an apple sure would be good right now. Oh, I would kill for chocolate right now. Write those things down because they're probably going to be the same the next time you're hiking and if you've got the stuff that you want while you're out there, you're going to be a lot happier. The third thing that I would recommend you do while you are on your first backpacking trip may sound obvious, but it is something you have to be intentional about. And that is, enjoy yourself. If you've only been hiking for 10 minutes and you come to a beautiful vista and you feel like stopping, taking off your shoes, having a snack, having a drink, and sitting there for a half hour, do it. If you planned on going five miles away from your car and at three miles you are just tired and busted and you come to a good campground, go ahead and stop. Embrace the principle of hike your own hike. You are not out there to impress anybody else. You are not out there to make anybody else happy. You are out there to experience backpacking and you're going to find that you don't necessarily have the same desires and plans that other people do. For some people, the joy of backpacking is just seeing how many miles they can crush. For others, it's more about creating memories and cementing images in their mind as they sit there and stare at the same thing for a half hour. You're going to be discovering what kind of a backpacker you are. Maybe you lean more to the hiking side. Maybe you lean more to the camping side. Maybe you're exactly in the middle, but whatever it is, just embrace it. Just do what is going to make you happy on that trip, and that will give you a good idea of the kind of hiking and backpacking and camping that you want to do in the future. 
All right, so now you are back from your first backpacking trip. What do you do next? Well, the first thing you need to do is unpack. But there are a couple things you might want to think about when you're doing your unpacking. Don't just pull everything out of the pack and put it away. Instead, take each thing out individually and ask yourself, did I actually use this? If the answer is no, put it over here. If the answer is yes, put it over here. When you're done with this process, you'll be able to look at the two piles and see that there is probably going to be a pile of stuff that you didn't use, and that's the pile that you don't necessarily want to just get rid of and never take again, like a med kit, but it is a pile that you want to look at very critically and ask yourself, should I really be bringing this just in case? Again, some items like a medical kit, you definitely want to bring just in case, but Maybe that third t-shirt wasn't necessary. Maybe you didn't need those extra two meals. The important thing is to be able to add to your notes for that backpacking trip the things you brought that you used and the things you brought that you did not use. Second, you're going to want to clean your gear. And this is something that I recommend doing right away because it is just never something you're going to want to do. And if you get all that stuff put away, you're not going to take it back out again and clean it. But you don't want it sitting there full of grit, possibly rusting or having other problems until your next backpacking trip. So not necessarily right away, but before the stuff gets put away, you need to clean that stuff up. If it rained, that's going to mean taking the tent out and hanging it up somewhere and letting it air dry so it doesn't get moldy. Obviously all of your clothes and whatever you slept in is probably going to have to go in the laundry, but Look at the tags and make sure you know how to launder those things. A lot of hiking clothes don't like to go through the same kind of process that your t-shirts and jeans do. Make sure any kind of mechanical gear you have, like your stove or your trekking poles, don't get put away dirty. Even just a quick wipe with a cloth can make a big difference in how that gear performs down the road. And finally, once you are unpacked and your gear is cleaned and organized and put away, I would do a little personal debriefing on the trip as soon as I can while the memories are still fresh. Look at your notes that are not only while you were on the trip, but the things you discovered about your gear when you unpacked, and basically make a plan for the next trip. Maybe you want to hike a little farther on your next trip, or maybe you want to have a little bit less adventure and go a little less far. Make a list of the things you didn't need that you could probably get rid of. Check off which meals you want to replenish and which ones you're probably not going to want to eat again. Make a shopping list for the snacks you're going to want on the next trip. Note how your clothing performed with the different layers that you brought in the temperatures that you were in. Basically what you're doing is you're setting yourself up to kind of be your own expert and give yourself your own advice for the next trip that you plan on taking. Learn from your first backpacking trip. You can set yourself up for a very enjoyable second, third, fourth, and hopefully many more trips. All right, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, would you mind giving it a like? And if you are not a subscriber to Backcountry Pilgrim, if you click that subscribe button and click the bell, YouTube will let you know the next time I put a video out. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and take it easy.